Today I will be presenting uh, the Quistor Flexible Payments tool and I will show you how this tool uh, works uh, for JD Edwards. Uh, this tool uh, has been designed to provide flexibility uh, when uh, creating uh, payment files. So um, I will show you how this tool works. So the best thing about this tool is that uh, the end user um, will not experience any difference in the payment process because they will be using the standard uh, JD Edwards uh, payments. So the creation of a payment group will be the same. There is no change there. And um, they will not notice any difference when processing a payment group. For this uh, demo, I have created two payment groups. One is in uh, US dollars, and this uh, payment will generate a text file um, according to the uh, specifications of the Bank of New York. And the other payment is a SIPA payment, so the currency is Euro. And the file that will be generated is an XML file, and it uh, is generated according to the specifications of the BN Paribas Bank. So um, the user will uh, write the payment just as uh, it usually does. And the rest of the flow is the same. The only difference is that in the background, the report creating the payment file will not be a standard JDE report, but it will be a Quistor report. I will write the SIPA payment as well. And you will see here in the uh, submitted jobs, there are two reports, two Quistor reports being uh, submitted per payment group. Um, the second one is the one responsible for creating the payment file. This report also provides a PDF output that I will now show you. The first page contains uh, general information about the payment uh, that is being processed. So I can see here the banking information of the company uh, making the payment. And I can see how many payments are included in the run and what is the total uh, of that uh, payment. Um, on the following pages, uh, I will see uh, the following pages can be used as a remittance advice for the supplier. So I will see the banking details of the vendor that is being, uh, that is the beneficiary of that payment and I can see which invoices are being paid. And the last page of this PDF output, uh, it's not very interesting for the end user, but it's useful in case any errors um, arise. Uh, first, you will see how the payment file uh, would look like, and then you can see below uh, the destination directory where that payment has been written and the name of the payment file. So you can see here that it's a text file. This is the name of the file and uh, this, in this uh, case I can uh, easily find the file in that shared uh, directory. 
In case of any errors, an error will be printed in this page and an error message will be sent to the work center. I will show you how the other PDF looks file uh, looks like. Um, let's open the PDF corresponding to the SIPA file. So we'll see now that the banking details provide an IBAN number instead of a bank account number, as we saw with the uh, US payment. Um, we also see the total amount of the payment group and the number of payments that are included in that uh, payment group. The following pages um, can be used as remittance advice and we can see which vendor has been paid, what are the banking details of that uh, vendor and the total amount of uh, the payment to that uh, beneficiary and which invoices are being paid. The following page is each page is for um, a different supplier. And the last page, again, it will show how the payment file looks like. In this case, it's an XML uh, file. And we can see where that file has been written and what is the name of that file. In this case, it's an XML file. So as you see, the payment process for the end user remains the same. The only difference is that in the background, the report creating the payment file uh, will be uh, a different report. But uh, the payment process re remains the same uh, for the end user. Um, I would also like to show you the, a little bit of the setup of this tool. This tool uh, can easily be implemented in, uh, in uh, one week, including the installation, the configuration, testing and end user training. So let me show you um, the application where we set up each uh, bank format. So this is the application where we tell the system how the payment file uh, should look like and where to get the information, um, where to retrieve the information uh, to populate that file. So let me show you the Bank of New York first. This application is not meant to be used by end users. This usually uh, is used at the beginning of the implementation to uh, uh, configure each uh, payment file. So it will depend on how many banks uh, you are working with. So the, you will normally have one or two uh, four months per bank, depending on, on the type of payments that you make with each bank. So this is how it looks like for uh, when you create a TXT file. Um, I will not go into the details of each uh, field because it's too technical and uh, it's uh, all the information on how to build a file. Uh, it's also included in the training uh, material and in the uh, user uh, setup uh, manual. But uh, basically here we tell uh, which calculations will be done to create that file and where to get that uh, information, which file name and data item will be used to retrieve the data to populate that file. Um, and let me show you how the XML looks like. So in the case of the XML, uh, most of the XML tags are specified in this uh, field as a constant value. Um, 
We have uh, several bank formats already created at Quistor, and those can be um, one can be delivered with the tool, and the rest can be uh, acquired separately, or you can build your own uh, formats yourself by copying an existing format and making the changes. It's uh, not very difficult. And let me show you another uh, application that is delivered with the solution. And this application, it's, uh, it's designed to tell the system uh, which uh, bank format to use for each bank account and payment instrument combination. So most of the times each bank has its own uh, specification. And here is uh, the application where you tell the system which bank format to use depending on the bank account and the payment instrument combination. We also have another uh, application that provides flexibility uh, in terms of naming the file. So uh, in this application, you can tell the system how you would like to name your uh, payment file. So here I will open one. Let's see this one. In this application, uh, in the format the string, uh, you can type uh, constant uh, data, uh, like the one, like the what, like uh, the data I'm uh, highlighting now. But we also have some kind of shortcuts to include dynamic data. So in this case, uh, the S between uh, question marks, that will be the um, payment uh, group number. So it's really easy to identify which file belongs to which payment group. Uh, you can also include a next number. And the next numbers uh, are set up here below. You have three buckets of next number if needed, but uh, yeah, most of the times with one is enough. You also need to specify the extension of the file. In this case, it's an XML. And here is a, a button that will uh, show a pop-up window uh, informing which, um, yeah, which shortcuts are supported. So you can also include the date in the name of the file, and it will bring today's date. So, for example, this one, this XML file, is including the date in the name of the file. So, um, yeah, that's basically um, how these uh, flexible payment tools work. Um, it's uh, really uh, useful when you uh, work with several different banks that require different formats. And then it's a, it's a way of uh, providing the flexibility you need to create uh, those files without the need of further customizing your system. Thanks for watching.